we're just going to come in like this and work our way down a little bit. So for my next project, uh, a small uh, hall form, I'm going to use this lovely piece of figured box elder that my friend uh, Bill Weich gave me. So the first, he'd already rounded it and flattened the sides and had center marks. First thing I'm going to do is just uh, score this, so to speak, and then I'm going to cut it on the bandsaw uh, so as to minimize any loss of wood. So it's it's over four inches thick, so it's a little too thick to cut with a thin parting tool all the way through, so I, that's why I want to use a bandsaw. So I've marked it about a halfway. I'm just going to score this. I'm going to mark it where I'm going to cut it on the bandsaw. Now we're going to take it over to the bandsaw. All right, cutting a piece of wood, a round piece of wood on a on a bandsaw can be very challenging and dangerous, rather, because it, it can spin. And it turns out I didn't have a glue block that would uh, hold this. It's a little bit too big for it to hold with a screw clamp, but this will work real well. And then uh, set that aside, set this down flat, and then just hold these two together until they cool. So I got this locked down, and that'll support that for a nice straight cut. Put on some ear protection, turn on the dust collection. Alright, we're getting ready to turn the, uh, the small hollow form out of this box elder that I'm uh, using this glue block for. So let's go ahead and just thread this on. My preference is to use a scroll chuck because it's faster and easier, but I want to play around a little bit with the glue gun and uh, this does work. I understand this will work work well. First thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drill a hole in this thing using a three quarter inch Forstner bit. Um, it, my preference is to use this twist bit, but it's one inch and for this size hollow form I'm afraid that might be just a little large, so I'm going to use this this three-quarter inch and I'm going to put this into uh, my Jacobs chuck tighten it off the lathe and we're going to go and turn at a very slow speed I'm going to turn at uh, no more than probably I'll say about 500 just ease it in Deep enough. Go ahead and remove the Forstner bit. Now let me go ahead and give you just a moment to set up this uh, slide the tail the tail stock out of the way, move the headstock down so I can hollow from the end. Uh, one of the advantages of having this big powermatic. So now we're almost ready to hollow, but I want to go ahead and do some shaping on the outside uh, before we uh, do any inside hollowing. So the first thing I want to do is true up the outside and then start start shaping. And it's running just a little bit out around, so let's just
So we can kind of keep on track. I want to. I've got the inside uh, depth measured. We're going to go ahead and transfer that to the outside. So that's right there. So we've got. We'll wind up probably parting this thing off somewhere close to. Give us a little run to the part off there. So I'm going to go ahead and take this down just a little bit with a parting tool. So we kind of have a little better feel for what the bottom's going to look like. But certainly no lower than the glue line. to what I want. I want to bring this in a little bit more here. Of course, got to round that off. Um, since we've got plenty of glue service, I'm going to go ahead and part it down just a little bit more. Give my, my eye something to, to better, better shoot for. To aim towards. go too far because I want maximum stability at the bottom uh, while I'm hollowing so I don't want to go any further than that. Okay. Now we're ready to start hollow the hollowing process. Okay, we're going to start hollowing with my uh, half inch uh, straight bar. Uh, it's a John Jordan tool, very nice for smaller hollow forms, which I put placed a, a very long handle. I've got about almost a five to one uh, leverage uh, to almost the maximum distance that I can cut with this. D general rule of thumb is uh, the bar diameter times about 12. So in this case, I can go about six inches without uh, excessive chatter. In this case, I'm going less than three, so this tool is a, is a good fit. I'm just going to hollow out the center here, uh, take that three-quarter inch, try to make it a little bit broader. A little bit of a blown out. Because I'm hollowing uh, parallel uh, grain, parallel with the axis, just like a typical spindle, um, what we're going to get, we're going right into end grain, and we're just going to get a lot of depth, dust. We're not going to get any shavings uh, regardless of what tool we use. So we've cleared a little bit of room there for some of those chips to build up a little bit so we don't have to clear it quite as often. I'm actually blowing the, the end of this in case you weren't <laughs> weren't sure. Now we're going to go to the swan neck tool and get a, uh, start uh, doing a little more removal. Back this off a little bit. When you use this tool, it's got to be fully supported here, not down here. Or this will spin, but right here, you, this is uh, right on the axis. The cutting edge is on the axis of the bar, uh, but it allows you to come in from the side. And we're just going to come in like this and work our way down a little bit.
emergency cut off. Awful lot of fine dust. Turn my dust collector on. small hollow forms I use lots of different tools I use this uh, uh, reground harbor freight tool to get under the shoulder a little bit uh, the trouble with this one is you can't go too deep because the the uh, handles not long enough to give you that uh, five to one leverage you need over the tool rest so it works fine under here but if you go any deeper you're in you're in trouble I have this other little tool, this, this Sorby, that's got this small high-speed steel uh, scraper on it. And we're going to go in there and try to clean up the bottom. Uh, this has the same challenge. Um, you can't go too deep because of the handle. In this case, I want to get the tool rest as close as possible. I'm going to go in right there. So let's give that a shot. I'm just going to clean up the bottom a little bit. And this is mostly a cleanup tool with this round round bit. I'll show you how to sharpen that in just a moment. We're going to now pull this tool rest back and come back up under the shoulder and of course I need to have it supported tilt the tool rest a little bit I'm cutting right on center thick. Measure wall thickness. I've got some uh, 1 16th inch spring steel. Uh, it's actually piano steel calipers I made and by knowing that distance uh, there I can see by, by measuring the gap just how you know how close it is. In this case I think y'all can see the gap if I lift it up a little bit. You can see I'm getting quite thin here. Bottom, it's thicker. Right there, it's, it's fairly thick. But as I come around here, you can see it get, gets pretty wide. So it's and here, it's still a little thick. Still a little thick in here. The trick is being able to feel that gap with your tool. Now this is not cutting real well, so I think I'm going to uh, swap cutters. Alright, let me show you how I'm going to sharpen this little round uh, uh, cutter. I'm simply going to use a diamond hone. I'm going to put just a little bit of lapping fluid on here. And uh, I'm going to give you a secret. This lapping fluid is nothing more than ethylene glycol, which is antifreeze. But it'll help help do the cutting and keep this thing clean. So all we're doing is just honing the surface a little bit by just rubbing around flat. And, and that'll be a nice, nice flat surface. But I'm going to set that aside. We're going to get a little more aggressive with another little hollowing tool for this uh, Sorby system. And that's this one. Uh, 
Okay, after an exhaustive search, I finally found that uh, missing screw and put uh, put the bit back in, and you can see uh, the shape of that that tip. And with this, we can reach on back in here. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Trick is easing it in to make sure that you don't have anything getting caught. out those cutters and just take a nice smoothing pass along along here to try to just try to smooth the edges out a little bit if I can keep from losing this screw this time you can see this cutter's got a bit of a beveled edge Scraper does a does a remarkable job of on smoothing these these inside these hollow forms, and I'm not going to sand it. It's going to be hard for somebody to get their hand finger in there anyway. All right, now time for me to refine this lip a little bit. I think I'm going to smooth this out with this 3/8 inch spindle gouge. Anchor, bevel. Slowly pick up the cut. We've got just a bit of a concave here. Let's change that shape slightly here. I think I want to use a negative rake scraper. I'll come around here. Okay, I like that shape. I think all it needs is a bit of a sanding. Alright, so from here, all we got to do is do a little sanding and then we'll, we'll part it off. I'll do the sanding off, off camera. Okay, we're going to go ahead and part this off very carefully using a thin fluted narrow parting tool. Kind of try to kind of come in slightly concave. See if I can't do this left handed supporting this thing up underneath my arm. There's our there's our form. Uh, I'm going to sand this out on the uh, on the drill press with a mandrel, and then uh, I'll decide what kind of finish I put on it. Thanks for watching.